Hello folks and welcome to Four Season Backpacking. Please subscribe for the latest outdoor adventure videos. Good morning folks. Well this is where I camped last night. In the woods. Right, I'm going to get the tent down now and make myself some coffee. I've already had a bite to eat. Had a Gingster's pasty. As I said, I haven't got my stove with me. Don't really like those pasties that much. Prefer a real Cornish pasty, but Gingster's is the way to go in a corner shop. As you can see, I've got the tent down, no trace left. All the rubbish is packed away in the plastic bag there on my bag. All is good. Yeah, this farmer's track looks a hell of a lot like a Roman road, but it's not saying it is on the map. Uh, by the way, uh, where I was camping, just five minutes from there, was the most perfect camping spot, and it was on trail as well. Absolutely perfect. It's a shame I didn't go there instead of camping and stinging it all, but still I had a good night's sleep. Actually, it wasn't that bad. It was a nice camping spot in itself, but yeah, but the other one, <laughs> it was perfect. And there were so many places to camp as well. Well, down here somewhere, that's supposed to be remains of a Roman settlement. However, later on today's hike, we do go past a famous Roman villa, uh, Cheddar, it's called Cheddar Villa, Cheddar Roman Villa. Um, I'll put the name up on the screen if I'm wrong, um, but I definitely go past it because I remember when I did the Millen Way, years ago I went past it and I looked on the map. Um, but it's a paid for one and it's possibly closed as well. And unfortunately I can't afford to pay to go and see it. Maybe I should become a member of one of these uh, heritage uh, things like English Heritage or whatever it is, you know. So what you're looking at now would have been a Roman settlement. Uh, there are no remains of it actually, it just says it was a Roman settlement so you can't actually see anything. And it's by the, the disused uh, Seven, Seven Canal by the, um, there's a pub down here, I don't know if it still is a pub, it looks like it, um, by a tunnel that used to be the longest transport tunnel in the world, it's a canal tunnel, it's disused, and the entrance to it, I think, is fantastic, you'll see it, well it'll be just coming up in a minute, I'll show you. It's, it's funny, because last time when I did the Millen Way, I actually camped in those trees, there's a bit of a ridge and there was someone having a drunken argument and they must have just come from the pub. And it was going on for quite a bit, it was getting quite heated and I was just camped up from them on the ridge. Like um, They must have only been like um, a couple of metres away from me but I was in the trees, couldn't see us. <laughs> I was hiding away in my tent, it's funny. So yeah, the pub must have been open then. Um, I think it must have been out of season when I, I did it. Um, but yeah, still a pub. It's got um, a beer garden, obviously not open at the moment, it's 7.18 in the morning. I don't know if I go through the pub, up here, must do. So the pub's actually called Tunnel House, obviously named after the um, tunnel. I wonder if it was a pub when the tunnel was being built. I have to look that up on the history. And then they got this thing called the barn, which is the barn golden bar. So folks, it's the Thames and Seven Canal. It's now disused. Um, if you want to um, pause it to read it, please do so. So the tunnel is down here. So I camped down, well, up in the trees up by this on the ridge, as I said, you can see the entrance to the tunnel. The entrance is pretty awesome, actually. So, this is the entrance. If you want to uh, pause that and read about it. Spooky, isn't it? 
So, uh, the longest tunnel in the world at one point for this sort of type of tunnel. So, folks, the uh, Severn Canal, hopefully I don't bloody fall into it. I'm filming down like this because the light is terrible in the sky. It's not very good at the moment, to be honest, for filming or photography, which is a great shame because this is a highlight of the hike. Oh, wow, look at this. You can go down here. At the outstripe, when I was last here, this wasn't like this, a square. It's all dried up. Apparently, they're restoring this canal. They want to restore it, and that, can that canal tile is going to be open again at some point. So I actually crossed the river. It's dry enough to cross. It's a bit muddy. There's some stepping stones. So I'm guessing it's we're safe to cross. Don't want to sink in loads of mud. But yeah, they're... Can you believe they're going to restore this? That's crazy. So I'm actually walking in the canal. Hopefully I don't sink into a <laughs> into the mud. I don't know if you can hear that. That's the train. There's actually a train track running nearby as well. I think this uh, canal will be awesome if they uh, reopen it. I mean, they've started restoration work on it, I'm sure. There's actually a, um, a leaflet up by the um, the top of this uh, tunnel, so I'm going to grab one of those and take a look at it. Yeah, so that's probably as good as I'm going to get, I think. I'm going to make a move now. So I'm just above the entrance to the tunnel now. See the canal down there. One day that will be reopened. So this is the Bathurst estate. I remember this. Enjoy the countryside. Go to rest. Use gates. Yeah, rubbish. Protect the wildlife. And that's always. So just going under the railway bridge. Um, just going under the railway for a small tunnel there, or a bridge. Ah, that's a bridge in it. Yeah, that's the point. When does a when does a bridge become a tunnel or when does a bridge become or when does a tunnel become a bridge how long does it have to be okay this is an interesting part of the route because right beside me below the ground is that tunnel part of that tunnel is running right alongside this track now <laughs> so under there at one point Narrow boats or barge boats, whatever you want to call them. We're going along under here, under this ground. How strange is that? On the, um, at the time, the world's longest transport tunnel in the world. Obviously in the world. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you come to a farmer's gate, they're really hard to open some of them and they have like chains are tied up. <clears throat> it's just easier just to get over the gate uh, rather than undo all the ropes and uh, sometimes they're quite hard to open uh, they're all bent out of shape uh, they're not always the easiest so yeah I always thought uh, half the time I just climb over the gate I can't be bothered with um, undoing loads of ropes and stuff it's too, too much effort just go over the gate it's a lot easier I am entering the village of Sappleton Looks like we've got a pub here. It's more like a house, but that's got beer garden as well. The pub, the bell at Sappington. Looks nice. It's got a model cow in the beer garden. Okay, folks, it's rubbish time at Sappleton. There we go. I think we've got. Did I put a bottle in there? Yeah. How, how about that for a village hall? This is a uh, Sappleton village hall. So there is a red telephone box here and it actually looks like it's got a telephone still. Still in use. 
Okay, so yeah, the telephone's still working. It's still in use. Looks like a coin one, actually. This is the uh, the church at Sappleton. The beach calf. All proceeds that go to the NHS. Tea, cakes, coffee, maroons, da 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 da. Pause it if you want to read it. And then we got this. I don't know if they're still doing it. Pause it if you want to read it. Be aware, horses on the loose on park. It's a massive estate this is. I think we're still on the same estate. Somebody has a nice pond in their estate. Saxon church. entrance to the church well wow. looks old oh, that's beautiful okay I don't know if I've got to go down this way on the trail so it's a bit dark I think It'd be better to film from the other way yeah I think so okay so this is from the other way so apparently this is a Saxon church. It's beautiful, isn't it? I can't remember what the name of this village is. I'll pull it up on the screen uh, and the name of the church, perhaps. So folks, it's in uh, Dunstbourne, I guess, and it's St Michael's Church. It's closed at the moment due to the, the current situation. It's another Ford, today's Ford, and there's a path for me. I remember this, this one's stuck in my mind. So this is what the Ford looks like uh, going the other way. The light's a little bit better. Okay, that's one hell of a tree house, or someone's house. It doesn't look quite big enough to be a house, but it's a hell of an impressive tree house. Yeah, it looks like a very elaborate tree house to me, up in the trees there on stilts. Well, someone's got lucky to have such a A tree house like that. That's awesome. Look at these old walls. I wonder how old they are. I mean, they could be not so old, but then again, they could be really old. I mean, this is a old track. As I've said before, a lot of people think that the path is like this because the amount of people have worn the path into the ground. That's why it's like this. Um, so it could be really old if that if that's um, if that's why it's like it. I love these tracks like this. They're, they're quite. Uh, I don't know, it feels like the olden days, you know. It's funny because this road coming up, there's a little old road by the dual carriageway A road, um, which I'm going to walk along aside. The actual area of the dual carriageway now, where the dual carriageway is, the A road. Um, was an ancient Roman road under there. So this is actually an ancient uh, route, at least maybe up, to, up almost 2,000 years old. It may even be older than that. It's pretty cool. On the old route here, walking by the new... Oh, yes, yeah, so there is a dual carriageway. You can only see one of the la uh, lanes at the moment. The other lane is behind the trees. And um, that dual carriageway as I said, yeah, like I said, it's ancient. Somewhere under there is the remains of a Roman road. I wonder if um, the actual, when it was the ancient Roman road there, I wonder if it was that busy. I wonder if they had a bridge here. Yeah. I actually wonder just how busy it was, the forms of transport. Um, who knows? So as you can see it's a dual carriageway, 
So we've got one bridge. One bridge is for traffic going one way and the other bridge is for tra traffic going the other way for uh, most people are not sure what dual carriageways are, maybe you're not from uh, the uh, UK so uh, yeah that's what dual carriageways are. They're like double lanes, two lanes going one way and two lanes going the other. Thanks to the farmer with his hedges I'm able to walk along and keep out the sun in this shade along here on this hedgerow Bot's house well uh, the landowner just stopped to talk to us he was telling me about some of the history of the place that Roman road used to be called the Welsh Welsh road because they reckon in Roman times it was uh, it was um, the entry <coughs> the gateway basically to Wales um, apparently on this farm there's a couple of Roman villas and um, the fight, he said he's finding bits and pieces all the time uh, from the Romans around here so that's really cool but it's, it's not on the map that there's anything here I don't think but there's a lot of things that are not on the map that um, I suppose they haven't done any archaeology on it I reckon in my, my opinion and I've been pretty much all over the UK well not everywhere obviously but I've been a lot of places around the UK Wales, England, Scotland, England and um, I think the Cotswolds has got the nicest architecture when it comes to like villages in the whole of the UK um, like they might not have the the mountains here like the Lake District where uh, some parts of Wales or some parts of Scotland but the architecture of the houses like it's just the, the villages are just so pretty um, I'm pretty sure they're some of the nicest villages in uh, the UK in the Cotswolds without a doubt I think but yeah let me know in the comments what you think where's where's um, what's the nicest uh, village you've ever been to uh, in the UK so we're heading to the next village now we're not very really far from it <sighs> it's gone out my head what it's called so well, I'll put it up on the screen what it's called anyway another little waterfall on the Cotswold way I remember this from last time actually when I got to this bit last time I remember it being quite warm it was very sunny ah, there's a bus stop I wonder if there's any buses going to Sirencester be good for restocking um, it doesn't look like the phone box is here anymore it's got this red um, red letterbox no it looks like the phone box is gone okay time to bag some rubbish and bag some rubbish I'm gonna get rid of this plastic bag as well because it's getting really manky oh, can't say there's much of a bus service from here it says 12.57 that's the only bus on a um, weekday and we're in Wood Man Woodmancock <laughs> Woodcock Woodmancock Cot Woodmancot So this is the name of the village I've just been in That was struggling to get up the hill wasn't it? Well folks, I'm not going to be using it. There is a bus service to Cheltenham. It says in half an hour's time. Um, I see I could use it to um, restock on food, but I don't know if these uh, times are out of date. Well, there's a really useful thing on a uh, Giggle. You could click on the bus stop on the ma uh, Google Maps and um, it will tell you the bus times. But according to this, there isn't one to 2.35 and it is uh, 12.54 but I've also just seen that there is a post office in Radcombe where the path goes through and I looked on Google Maps and apparently there's a stores there as well so hopefully it's open it says it is on Google Maps and, and the bus stop on the other side of the road goes to Swindon can you believe there's not another one for 42 minutes and that's a bus stop for it it's a Red, Red Coombe bus stop on the, um, I'm guessing a B road or the A road as you come into it on the hike I'm doing. It looks like an old train bridge. 
bad off it is, you know. Right, if it was a train bridge, it'd have um, a number here on the inside, and it hasn't. So it's either an old train bridge, or it's never been one. But it looks like one. So this is the church. I think it's called Wadcombe or something. I'll put the proper name for it up on the screen. Guys, as you can imagine, I'm, I'm hiking large distances with quite a lot of gear and your mind doesn't always work properly. <laughs> well folks, the post office is just down here and I remember it, I've, I've used the stores down here before uh, when I did them at Millenway. So yeah, Red Coombe, Rand, Rand Coombe stores and post office. It's like there's a red phone box here. But yeah, and the phone has gone. As you can see, no phone anymore. Might have been when I last walked past here. So guys, the uh, shop in Rend Rendcombe, Rendcombe stores. They're really friendly in there. Nice little shop. Actually quite pleasant considering as well like uh, what's going on in the world with a lot of people being worried about the situation. No, they were a really friendly shop. Um, anything is, I noticed they didn't have the prices on all the products, any the products were had the prices printed on the labels, you know, like drinks bottles. Anyway, so I paid, I've got the receipt here, I paid uh, £1.40 for Highland Still, Highland Still Spring Water, uh, Grenade Fudge Brownie Drink that is by the way, it's like a sort of milkshakey sort of protein drink, £2.49, Euro, Euro Summer Fruit, uh, 50 pence which it said on the bottle orange sport isotonic which it said on the bottle 50 pence and fruit and veg which was um, blackberries 2.99 I'm not sure how many grams there were a um, bit smaller than the supermarket ones I think um, and sandwiches um, I paid two pounds 60 each for the sandwiches they look like quite nice sandwiches and I've got two carrier bags actually but They've only charged me five pence, which is um, brilliant. So cheers guys for that. Yeah, it's not too bad a price. And I was really happy to see this shop because I didn't realize there was going to be a shop there, but I did actually use this shop when I did the um, Macmillan Way from uh, Boston to Abbotsbury. Now guys, you might be wondering what I'm doing here. Well, this is a battery pack. Um, and I'm using this to charge, I, I use this to charge up my phone. Every time I stop for a rest, I start charging the phone up again. I've got 89% left on there. I've already gone through one battery pack. This is my second. I've got two others. I've got two of these ones. I've got a smaller one and I've got another big battery pack. So I've got, uh, what's that, three, four battery packs all together. But if it's way enough power for this, the rest of this hike, um, I'm going to charge up my GoPro, which I'm filming with now in a second when I've stopped filming this. I'll leave a link in the description for this battery pack. Guys, it's so much better buying in these little independent shops. Um, you cannot get a drink like this in a supermarket for 50 pence. I always see these uh, cheap isotonic drinks in uh, little independent shops. 50 pence, you can't go wrong, can you? Even though I'm doing the Cotswold round and a, a, a lot of it goes on the Merlin way and the Cotswold way, um, I've been going past the Monarch's Way so many times on this trail and it says here it's a 615 mile walking trail following the great escape of Charles II after the Battle of Worcester in 1651. So that's an even longer walking trail than um, the one I'm doing which is over 200 mi uh, miles. Yeah, I'm going to look this one up, it might be quite interesting. I that is a hell of a trail, isn't it? 615 miles. I think that might be longer than the southwest coast path. Tell you what, guys, uh, I've noticed um, there's a lot of farmers' fields that um, have got wildflowers growing in at the moment. It's really nice. Um, so this one's got uh, crops one side, and it's got uh, wildflowers the other side. Come on. Up. 
so that's the a pub in Chedsworth, seven tons it's called. But I'm walking up this way, past the church. I don't think there's a shop here. I've already been to the shop in um, Rend Rendcombe, I think it was. Um, there is a farm shop here, I believe, but it's right at the other end of the village. I think I've got to go down a hill to get to it. Just going to have a quick look at the church here in uh, Chedsworth. starting to rain by the way guys big church I won't go in because there's the situation and all that I'm not bothered but other people are so I won't bother just walking back where I've just uh, come from <laughs> the bells are ringing in the uh, church there there's the uh, pub down there the seven Tun pub, which I'm not going to, so I'm walking up here. That's a useful bridge, isn't it? Actually, the train line going beside me goes through this uh, tunnel. I don't know how long it is. I presume the train line's still in use. It actually looks like the train line's um, an abandoned one, and the actual Rome, uh, Chedworth Road, Roman villa is up here. Um, it's a paid for one, so I might be able to get some views for you over the wall or whatever there is. I'm pretty sure there were some views last time I went past it. So just above the tunnel by the looks of it they built some houses or a house or some manor and the tunnel comes out there somewhere and the disused ride, ride track goes down there. It looks like it's disused. No I still can't can't see from here it's all covered in the trees the track. I absolutely no sign of the entrance to the tunnel so it's actually like an up and then i'm going down to the gorge i thought it was going up i went up that uh where the tunnel was and now i'm going down again to past the um it seems the villa for some reason in my mind it was uphill but it seems to be down unless I could be mistaken, not there yet. Roman villa footpath only folks. Apparently, even though it is my trail as well. So quiet, it's not inundated with tourists. And apparently down this way is the entrance, I guess, if you're going in to see the Roman villa. I've got to go a slightly different way. Okay, no, I'm wrong. I am supposed to be going this way. Still raining. Trees are protecting me from the rain a little bit. Um, so quiet down here. I'm wondering, it's supposed to be closing at 4.30. It's an, just a, under another hour till it closes, apparently, according to Google. And apparently you have to book your visit in advance. You can't just turn up and go there. You have to book it in advance. I, I guess because of what's going on and everything. Okay, I think this is part of the railway this, this would have been part of the disused oh no it can't be can it because there's a tunnel yeah so um it's going for a railway tunnel by the looks of it looks like the first load of tourists are coming up okay looks like they went a different way it's not busy though well not yet this probably won't come out very well in a tunnel because i've got it on an ico 100 i'm going to turn it off I don't know if it looked like an old uh, railway bridge or tunnel. But like I said, the, the track goes, looks like it goes under here. There's a tunnel going under this here. So I'm not sure what that is up there. Uh, this looks like the entrance to the uh, villa down here. And this is coming up to the car parking area. Oh, it's a calf. Oh, it's open. Yeah, that's a car park. Toilets. Toilets are open. Calf. Says something about being closed there. Yeah, it looks like it's closed. Sorry, 
This area is closed. Learning centre. That's closed as well. Oh, that's a cafe, I think. Sorry, we're closed. Please check the website for any updates. So the visitor centre is closed as well. Even though it said it was open on Google. Or maybe that's to view the monument. These are like normal opening times, I guess. So that's all the remains in there, I guess. Which you can't see because it's closed. You have to pay to go in as well. Don't know if you can see anything through this way. Can't really see anything much. Can't really see anything worth mentioning. Well, I didn't really see it, did I? So I can't say I was impressed. Sorry, guys. See, like I said, guys, pre-booked tickets only to help us limit the numbers and keep everybody safe. So it's open from February to November, folks. Nice along here. Okay, just coming up to the village of Yansworth. It just looks like a hamlet to me. I think you might have a church actually. That's Yansworth. I'm not actually filmed all the little settlements I've gone through. <laughs> I am trying to keep the, the video to a minimum and just film interesting stuff. But there's probably a few things that I could have filmed. But you know what? I just want to enjoy the hike as well. It is actually quite hard work. Um, videoing, taking photos, hiking with all this gear and enjoy, wanting to enjoy it at the same time. Oh, that's a very red phone box. But yeah, no phone, disfibrillator. Can't even say that. The, the standard sort of like a uh, defibrillator. Still got a post box. That's the town hall. And there, we've got a water pump. And there's the uh, village, I guess, coat, ha coat of arms. I guess that's what you'd say. Wow. There's a lot of estates around here. Yeah, it seems to be a state after a state. Uh, these villages are usually, I think, privately owned by an estate, a lot of them. I think this one is. It just seems that way. Uh, that, this church looks stunning. Look how old it is. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. But it looks really old. <laughs> it really does look old, that church. That's incredible. Ah, I think I remember this now. Yeah, I so remember. This is the front of the church. Yeah, I remember this church having a really remote feel to it. So I was walking from the other way. So I was walking through countryside and I just got to here. I didn't realise it was part of a big estate. Yeah, this is from the back of the church. Left my bag out the front. I don't really want to leave it too long on its own. I'm sure it's all right here. So as you can see, it's right next to um, a farm on the estate. Some of these graves are not too old. Some of them are really old by the looks of it. So <laughs> there's like a the hay right next to the cemetery. Just that. So the farm is here. The church is over there in the estate. And you've got old gravestones here. Yeah, I have to say this was one of my favourite churches on the whole of the, the Macmillan way and I have to say it probably is on the Cotswold way as well. Palmer's having a big fire there or had a big fire it's still smouldering. Plenty of wood over there for the winter. Well at the end of this uh, field there's a stone called the Hangman Stone which I remember from when I did the Macmillan way. I got some pictures of it. I hope it's still there. Uh, but no one really knows why it got that name or wh whether it was really a hangman stone or what its original use was, whether it was a 
Neolithic standing stone, no one really knows, I don't think. Um, if you do a Google search, you can maybe find a bit more about it. I might put some information up in the uh, description. Uh, top tip, guys. I always put extra information in the description that I might not say on the video, so it's always worth checking out. The Hangman Stone. Where did it get its name from? What was it originally used for? Check out the... Um, slip there in the stone. I wonder what that was all about. This is what it looks like from behind. It's got a lot of moss growing on it. There's a slip. It's 6.11, but I'm not really seeing much in the way of places to camp on the map, on the OS map. So really, when I see an ideal place, I really need to, I think, I should put the tent up there. Um, I'm not that far from a village, actually, though. Hmm, slight change in mind. I think I'm going to, I think I'm just going to keep walking. Because it's only 6.15, I don't really want to put the tent up so early this time of year. So I just walked up from there, saw the sheeps. And I don't know, there's a village over there. I think the village I'm going to is much closer, so it must be over here. Oh, this is the next village. Got a defibrillator there. Have a look at the church. Oh, check that church out. I don't think that was the way I was supposed to be going, but I just thought I'd film the church for a bit. I do remember this one before. I think I walked down this way before. Well, I come down here to look at the church. There's an old chapel over there. I think most of the people who live in these sort of areas are really quite well off or wealthy um, but I wonder if there's anybody left who grew up in this area you know like who are not wealthy but they just still live here I wonder okay folks well this is the name of the village I just went through Ham Hampnet Cheltenham Oxford sign Hot food and coffee served daily. Ah, I've just been in that village, I didn't see that. So that must be the village where the uh, hot food and coffee and cakes served daily is. What is that? Bank holiday. Oh. We're well, coming up to the next village in a bit. Hopefully it's got a bin. It's like the village time forgot. <laughs> Sure which way I've got to go actually. Might be down this way. There's a post box. Check check this out for a Ford. Yeah, cheers for the bridge guys. More like a muddy muddy puddle. Yeah, it's definitely a Ford Ford. Just not had much rain, I guess. I vaguely remember it from last time. Right, this is the uh the church of the village I'm in and again I'm not sure the name of this village or the, the name of the church I can put it up on the uh, screen for you well guessing that was the town hall or still is or village hall or whatever oh it's got a phone, phone in there I thought it was going to be one without a phone, but it's still got its phone. Yeah, it's still got its phone. It's working as well by the looks of it. Folks, 
because I found a camping spot and as I said I'm not going to tell you where it is I keep my location secret now obviously sometimes it's not going to be possible to keep a location secret if there's like a something in the background you can see you can recognize but obviously in these woodlands um, you're not going to know where it is um, just because I don't want loads of people turning up and onto someone's woods and um, even a mess really I know not everyone's going to do that but some people do right well I've got the Van Gogh F10 helium tent which is a really good budget ultralight tent uh, I'll put a link in the description and um, I've used this on so many hikes now even the Cambran way I think was one of the first hikes I used it on have had it in all weathers can easily stand up to 30 mile per hour gusts if you have it put up right uh, make sure it's all nice and the tension it's got some good tension so it's not all lagging um, when the tent's upright it can handle like I said 30 mile per hour gusts no problem it's really waterproof as well really waterproof now I could give you some spiel about um, the waterproof rating but I've actually had this out in the field I've tested it in all weathers so I know that it's waterproof so it doesn't matter I don't have to tell you hydrostatic head ratings or whatever you can look that up anyway but I've tested this in real life and tested it a lot in real life it's oh god knows how many times it's been put up probably it must have been used well over 50 times on 50 night camps probably more than that to be honest um yeah i'd say more than way over 50 times this tent's been used on 50 wild camps over 50 wild camps now i believe it comes in at 1.2 kilos or 1200 kilos i should say um which is very light for the price it is extremely um good value and the strength it is and how waterproof it is now you can make it even lighter if you um bought some titanium pegs for it which you can do um you can get fairly cheap titanium pegs these days um there's so many so many uh options for titanium pegs I often put the uh, tent up on ground like this. I never use ground sheets, but I used to um, on one of my other tents, but um, I stopped using them. It's pointless. Like I said, I've used this so many times and the, the, the bottom of the tent is still waterproof. Do you get damp in it? You get damp in every tent, mate. I can tell you every tent I've ever had gets damp. It depends on a lot of things, I think. At the moment, it's not getting damp this time of year, which is in um, July. I'm not finding the tents getting any um, dampness to it, but um, certain times of year, certain situations, I guess. Yeah, of course it's going to get damp, and every tent does. There isn't a tent that doesn't. Or if there is, yeah, please let us know in the comments. As I said, it's a great tent. Um, links in the uh, link in the description where you can buy this tent. Highly recommended. Now this is now this is inside my tent. As you can see, I've got the Maverick Air in there with four batteries and the controller. And I've got my phone charging up there with a battery pack. I've got one, two, three other battery packs with me as well. Um, three of them are large battery packs and one of them is a small battery pack. Yeah, I did over 40 kilometres today which I've done mo quite a few days on the um, Cotswold way, Cotswold uh, round, sorry. Um, so I got myself a high protein shake today from the shops. Um, this was the only one available. I've not tried one of these before. It was quite expensive. I think it was um, £2.90 or something. But um, yeah, definitely needed some protein at the moment. Well, if you got this far, I really appreciate that. Thanks a lot. 
and I'm wishing you the best 2021 ever. Take care, folks.